On the way back to learning Photoshop day six, let us talk about the properties menu. If you can't see it, just go to window and then left click on properties. What you can actually see here depends on what element is active in the layers menu. So if I left click here outside of the layer zero, it will switch to the document properties and then we can change the canvas for example. And if I activate layer zero, we will have the pixel layer adjustments. Let me create maybe a rectangle. And now we have the shape properties. So depending on whatever is selected, this will look different. And we are going to introduce new features here and there whenever we have a new object in a tutorial. And this one is just to give an overview, for example, for the rectangle. First option is usually a transform option. In this case, for the shape, we can adjust with height, position, with X and Y. Then we have an angle below and we have these flipping options. So you can mirror that. Let me give it an angle and now it becomes more obvious. I flip it horizontally and then vertically. There's also this link icon and this simply connects with an height. So when it's active and I adjust one value, the second will be adjusted accordingly. And if I uncheck it, you can adjust with an height without adjusting the other one. Let me move that here and you can also see it doesn't matter what tool is active. I switch between a rectangle tool and move tool and the properties menu stays the same. So this is not dependent on the tool, this is dependent on what is active in the layers menu. You also have this very helpful undo button right here and this returns the shape to whatever it was like when you drew it first or created it first. When you've got shapes, an appearance panel follows and here you can set fill and stroke. Let me adjust the fill, you can click here and then adjust it a little bit more in detail. But you can also pick the last swatches that were active and there are folders for more swatches, for example RGB values. Simply confirm via enter. You can add a stroke. Stroke is pretty thin so you can't really see it, but the value below is to adjust it. You can type that in or use the slider. And here's an option for the stroke style, for example dotted. The three drop downs below is for the orientation of the stroke. You can have that inside, center or outside. Next one is for the join. This is for multiple objects when they meet. We don't have that here. But let me return first to a stroke. And more importantly for a single object is the last option on the right. Because this changes the corner. By default this is a straight corner, a sharp corner. Let me zoom in. Any other options allow you to give it a bevel or a round corner. I've said first option here is the sharp corner. That's by default active and bevel, which is kind of like a cutoff. And rounded, it gives it a round corner. More options below are once again for round corners, but this time we can adjust them manually. Let me set that to a higher value so we can see properly, 25. You can also unlink it and then adjust each corner one by one. Top left would be the first option and you can see all of these values below. And the Pathfinder can be used to create binary operations. So when we have one element here, the rectangle, I can use that to create a cutout of the background for example. Or I can cut the background out like this and only leave our rectangle. If we switch back to our layer, you can see we have the align and distribute options here. So this wasn't available with a rectangle. And there are also sometimes quick actions. This is actually very helpful when we work with photos later on. We'll use, for example, remove background. There's a one click option here. And you will also find that in the properties menu. Good idea for you to try it out yourself. Create a rectangle, play a little bit around with it. Give different fill strokes, play around with the roundness. And then you've got the basics of the property menu understood. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.